there's time for more questions at the end, so if you want to connect with Matt at the end or the other Exegy folks. Wait, Jeff, I want to ask about one action. One action? That you would recommend, that Matt would recommend that we take. Oh. Uh, download one of the current apps. Down, yeah. Download one of the current apps is the action. Yeah, um, and if the speakers, if you at the end could give away for folks to plug in, if you're looking for help in some way, or looking for developers, or looking for data, something like that, at the end, that'd be great. And for those who are standing who want to sit, there's a few empty chairs right here. Great. Next up, we have a nonprofit called Knitted Bit. I'll let them explain that name. <laughs> We're actually uh, for profit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, right. if it's a for profit or a small consulting company. Actually, I'll jump into it. Uh, this is Winston Wolf. Hello. Um, I'm Jeremy. We're both, um, we both work for a company called Knitted Bit. Uh, knitted means shiny. This is a shiny bit of thing. So that's where the name came from. But uh, today we're going to be demoing an application that we did for the National Campaign for Teen and Unplanned Pregnancy. Um, and um, I'll tell you more about who we are um, uh, at the end. But uh, first, Jensen will jump into. Oh, actually, yeah, Jensen will jump into the camera. Can you hear me without the microphone? Can anyone not hear me? Right. I think the microphone's better for oh, recording if you don't mind, but if you don't want to, that's fine. I have money on the internet. <laughs> oh, it's not live streaming right now, it's just going. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> first, I want to ask who here is planning on building a mobile app? Anybody? Okay, a few. So we do that if you're interested, although I think there's some others as well. Uh, I'd like to show you the app that we built, or this is one of the apps that we built recently. It's called the Bedside and Reminders app. It's for the National Campaign to Prevent Teen and Unplanned Pregnancy. We just call it the National Campaign. And here's a little video of it. So when you start the app, uh, you see a, a daily message. The message is usually a humorous message, sometimes a little bit scandalous. I quite enjoy browsing through them. You can browse through with a little swipe. The core of the app, though, is giving you a reminder to take your birth control. So you would choose which birth control method you use, perhaps the patch. You tell the app when your the schedule for uh, when your schedule starts when you're taking the first patch and also a time you'd like a reminder every day. You can also ask it to give you a discreet reminder on your phone or a funny message in the beginning. And there's a calendar to allow you to see the upcoming reminder events that you're gonna have. Oh, and also the schedule for your particular method. Uh, is it every day or is it once a month or whatever? So what did the national campaign get from making an app? Because they already had a website that did all this stuff. First, the first thing they got is reliability because they, they used to send SMS messages and then they can get lost. But the other thing that they, could, they get is engagement data. Uh, when the app, uh, when the old system sends out an SMS, it just goes out. Do, do people get it? Do they respond? Did they do something about it? Every time someone uh, responds to one of these reminders, we, we can report it. We know how many, how many people are, are taking their birth control on time, how many are missing it. Um, and that, they can use that to understand how well they're reaching their, um, their audience. So now I'd like to talk very briefly about our process. We use the Agile development process. Has anybody heard of it? A few people, does anybody use it today? Okay, very few people use it today. So we love Agile. I won't go into it in detail, you could ask me later, but the basic concepts are all user work, all work that we do is tied to user value. Lots of conversations, hopefully face-to-face, -face, possibly through Skype, and small steps to correct course. Let me give you an example of, the, of that. So this is a page in the app. The first version of this page took seven taps to complete it. We gave it, we delivered the prototype to the national campaign, they tested it, and they said, whoa, seven taps, it's a little, it feels a little bit laborious. We figured out a way to reduce it to three taps. We delivered it a couple days later, and it was done. A, a super fast feedback. And how did the feedback come? Or how did, sorry, how did, how did it happen so fast? Uh, taking small steps, 
lots of conversations, so we didn't deliver to them and just disappear. They, we talked to them, how do you like it? Oh, we don't like it. All right, what should we do about it? And um, you know, fast, finding problems and fixing them quickly. Um, yeah. So I'm going to give a little history of sort of how we got to uh, build. Wait, the, I forgot to mention, the app is available now. You can, you can beta, uh, you can join us the beta test, uh, talk to us later, or go to our website. But 30 seconds left. So I'm just going to say, yeah, we've been working with Betsider for a long time, since 2011 originally, and we still provide SMS and email reminders, but we built this application because we wanted to improve reliability and provide a better experience for our users. Um, a little bit about us, we're, like I said, part of Knitted Bit. We're here in San Francisco. We're seven developers. We're all devs, um, but we work with other designers, and we work mostly with nonprofits and educational institutions. Um, and you can contact us. There's Winston, there's me. If you go to knitted.co, which is our new website, Apps for Change, um, you can sign up and we will send you a, um, we'll send you a link so you can get the beta. Right? Not, um, this is not public yet. Uh, we're waiting to, to finish our Android app before we go public. But, um, What's your Twitter handle? Uh, my Twitter handle is at J2U. Do you, does your company, I, I did the bedside one. Is there is a knitted, I think it was at knitted bit as well. I'm okay. not, I'll look it up. I was saying earlier to Susan that I'm terrible at social media. I like talking to people in person. Here it's we are, okay, don't worry. Okay. Uh, anyway. Other questions? Yeah, three minutes for questions. Uh, go ahead, yes. Yes, I'm going to just give perspective of an older person, yeah. uh, although I need to be on that. Uh, and that is that this could be used for uh, menopause or rehabilitation, taking HRT. And I would go crazy twice a week. I'd have to change the patch and have to go to opposite sides of my body. So there would be uh, a, met, met, uh, a reminder there telling me which side I have to go to. That's, I'll write that down. That's good. <laughs> and so, and I, and so I think everyone's heard that. But if, um, I'll just say that uh, this app is well it's intended for women using birth control. I get reminders every day because I love the messages, as Winston was talking about. So uh, you know, I, I, I haven't been taking a pill every day, but I love the pill. So, in the back. Do you see yourself as expanding this to reminders on other areas, like minders to go to the gym or meditate or whatever other goals people have? Um, I, I think so. I mean, not as, more. So this application and the um, the goal of uh, bedside or national campaign is really focused on women's health issues specifically. So they do have other kinds of reminders, like appointment reminders. So reminding you to go to appointment to see your provider. We also have um, different kinds of uh, STD and EPD reminders that we're working on. So there's other kinds of reminders that will probably go into this app. Um, but just general health, that sounds great too. I'd be happy to explore that, that's a nice idea. Yes. Um, so it's interesting what you said about uh, how they can get the data back and then use that to impact how they're developing their programs. Do you have examples of how they've been able to then take it to the next level? So we don't because the app's not public yet. <laughs> But we do, um, we do study our analytics on our website. For example, one reason why we, got, we decided to build this app is we noticed that 75% of our traffic is coming from mobile now on our, on our regular website. Half of that is iPhone, so we target iOS first. So we definitely look at analytics and look at trends to try to target our, our audience better. Can, can, we talk about, um, can we talk about the correlation of um, location clinics and poverty? Oh yeah, it's a good... Uh, so Winston brought up one thing we did do, okay, first things left. Uh, one thing we did do is, um, so we also, speaking of data, uh, we have a great, Bedside is trying to become the, like, the predominant data source for clinic information, so clinic locations. And so if you go to Bedside.org, you can search for your local clinic and also find emergency contraception. One thing uh, we, uh, one of the people at the campaign was trying to find out, you know, where, what parts of the United States um, is access more challenging. And so we're actually able to uh, dive into that data set and figure out where the locations in the United States are where women have to drive 50 miles or more to actually get to, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, for example. Yeah, a lot of, it turns out a lot of places in the middle. But um, uh, yes, yeah, so um, that's another way in which we're using that data. Thank you very much. Yeah, they'll be here afterwards, so keep your questions and, and find them later. I see people are taking the class assignment seriously and already looking for other ways to use the data and use the app, so thanks very much. Keep it going. If, you, if it hasn't occurred to you yet, how you can plug in, keep thinking about it.
or talk to one of these folks afterwards to figure out how you might be able to plug in. So next up, we have Career Hub. 